Light maintenance. Well, I'm waiting for people to show up for the live. shows up we'll still do the show and the regularly scheduled programming for today there we go get that a little bit more even there there we go looks a little bit better on that side and the way it was falling apart a little bit there get the edging with the dust rubbed down and covered up for a while there. You do some general maintenance on this side here to make it look more professional. Not that I need to be super professional. I'm not one of them big wigs yet. Eric Jabs or Ethan Elvis covers and more. I'm just pretty much a common player still, not even a rated rookie yet. <laughs> Who knows? Might have some people lurking about in the background, just not saying anything, waiting for the show to start. But get that evened up a little bit. Looks a little bit more straight now, at least. We will keep this here for when we open up the box here. Gotta put that right there. How's that sound? Use that for when I break open the box a little bit later here. Of course, I had to pump that guy there a little bit. All right, well. I'm going to get ready to get rocking and rolling here. It does show there's one or two people in the background. And I'll be getting ready to move forward with our content for today. We are going to do the 1944 Hall of Fame inductee. Only one inductee for 1944. And that was Kinsalandia. He's an executive for Major League Baseball. And was the sole inductee for 1944. And then after that, I'll be opening up my last and final uh, 2020 Tops Archives Baseball Blaster Box. That is going to be our content for today. And uh, I guess, well, doesn't really matter. Whatever time people start showing up, we will go into the live stream at that time. But I will be starting at 10.30 sharp with my content for today, whether I get anybody to show up or not. So, um, it does say I started streaming nine minutes ago. Um, we are live. Um, let me just double check real quick. Log in on my phone device here to make sure it is streaming live. Pretty sure it is. Let me then just double check here. Never hurts to double check everything. It does say I'm live. There we go. Yes, I am live. Let me go into the live chat. Type in something to make sure it shows up.
Okay, there we go. It showed up, so I know if I log into my phone, it does show that I am live at 1025. I guess I could say I'm the first in the live chat, but I don't count. <laughs> I don't count. So other than that, it looks like we are ready to go there. Let me grab one item here real quick. So as people show up, I can show them what my new uh, mystery bags look like. My new mystery bags, I'll put it right in the back here. Let me lay it right here. That way if somebody comes in, they could ask questions if they want to. But that is what my uh, 40 baseball card mystery bags look like for 50, uh, my 2020 Series 1 Silver Mystery Packs. If you look in the description of this video, you will see the information that is contained there for the product. So all you have to do is scroll down and read the description. I'll read it real quick since I do have three minutes here before our content starts. So starting tomorrow, October 3rd, my eBay listing will be posted for my new Silver Mystery Pack product and will be selling for $34.95. Price is reduced if more than one pack is purchased in a single transaction from my eBay page. And it will calculate and enter in all the, uh, the uh, shipping costs based on your location and the weight of the package. So it is fair and balanced there. So the listing as listed on my eBay will be 2020 Series 1 50 Years of Baseball Silver Mystery Packs. Mystery Packs will include 40 cards of the following. There will be 35 different year random cards including star player cards, rookie, rookies, draft picks, and prospects from 1971 through 2020 with possible extra hits contained within those 35 different cards from different years within that 50 year period. So you're not guaranteed any specific year in there but I will tell you, I was real strong on my uh, 90s and uh, upper 80s and my uh, late 2000s is my stronger areas. And then the rest will be randomly selected. Uh, pretty much I got a box separated up to the left of me here. And it has uh, many, 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 I'll say many, 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 uh, rookies, um, star player cards, um, draft picks, things of that nature. So it will be a good mix of some cards I think you might enjoy seeing. But again, it'll be four, uh, 35 different years within that random 50 year period from 71 to 2020 you will get three random hall of fame player cards um, with uh, randomly inserted into the hall of fame player cards in in the mystery packs will be um, hall of fame rookie cards and sometimes there might even be some second year hall of fame rookie uh, cards in there so their first and second year are randomly inserted you will get one random sp or insert or serialized card and in regards to that in the 35 different year random cards you could also get some uh possible short prints inserts or serialized that's why it says possible extra hits so they are randomly mixed into that grouping also and then uh you will get Every mystery pack will get a autograph card. So we do have 1030 here. I am going to get into my content at hand. And then we will get into um, the archives mystery box. And by then, if I have some people showing up and in here, I will take any questions in regards to my mystery packs. I will be having a sale tomorrow. So I will be having a sale tomorrow. And... Whomever jumps in here to be the first um, 
in the live chat, which is John Fishman's here at 1031. Just in time, John. I was get, just getting ready to finish up my introduction. And let me get you into my wheel of names. I do have a ton of names in there. You're like, oh, it's only the 2nd of October. Yes, but I, uh, my Patreon members, my channel members, all get entries. And as of this month in October, depending on what level they are, determines how many entries they get when they start off um, the, first, the first of the month each month. So... Um, that pretty much is how I've decided to do it. I'm the channel member and or the channel creator. So that's how I create. Um, I'm not crazy. My mom had me tested. Oh, for COVID? <laughs> that's okay. Sometimes it's not a bad idea, but who knows? I may have had COVID already. I don't need them to do a test to tell me I had it and not worry about it. Even if you've had it once, you can always get it again from what they're saying. So um, no, cra no crazy in the head. Let me get your entry here, John. Um, and then we will continue with our content at a hand. At least um, for... Um, the Hall of Fame Friday portion of it. It's really short today. It's only going to be one Hall of Famer. So today's video most likely will be short unless we get people showing up and uh, we could have time talking. I could go over uh, information about maybe my sale tomorrow. Remember again, every first Saturday of the month. Um, we will be having actually two sales this month because um, instead of waiting till the uh, 7th of November for my November sale, I'm going to have a Halloween Fall Harvest Scary Sale. <laughs> so we will have a sale not only on the 3rd, but on the 31st. And I'm going to determine between now and the end of the year if I want to continue with my sales or just put all of my uh, items up for sale in my eBay page. So that will be determined down the road here, but we are a little bit in here. So let's uh, let me refresh the chat real quick. You are the sole entry today, John, except for any super chats that might come in a little bit later on. But um, let me so that is good to go. Let me get this live chat refreshed here. And then we will get into our content at hand again. Today is just one inductee for 1944, and that is Ken Saul Landis. All right, so we'll get into I'm a Soul Man. Soul Man. Do, 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 Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> you didn't think I knew that song, huh? <laughs> Shows you how I'm dating myself now. All right. So let's get into his short bio for his Hall of Fame induction in 1944. And then we will get into our blaster box for this, uh, my, my final blaster box of Topps Archives Baseball, and then I will post up my listing of my base cards and my short print cards that I need for the base set, the 325 card set for this series. So that's what we will do there. But without further ado, it is 1035 since I had somebody show up late for the live stream, but now we will get into the content at hand. So Ken Saul Landis, Ken Saul Mountain Landis, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1944, and his primary position was an executive. So in the wake of the Black Sox scandal, in which players of Chicago White Sox were accused of fixing the 1919 World Series, baseball was in need of a leader who could regain the public's faith in the game. 
We want a man as chairman who will rule with an iron hand, said National League President John Heidler. Baseball has lacked a hand like that for years. It needs it needs it now worse than ever. Therefore, it is our object, object to appoint a big man to lead the new commission. Heidler and his fellow executives got all that and more when they appointed baseball's first commissioner, K- Kinsall Mountain Landis, in 1920. Formerly a federal judge who had built a reputation for fighting for corporations, Landis exercised his power as commissioner frequently and to the fullest extent, beginning with the Black Sox scandal. In his first major act as commissioner, Landis banned eight White Sox players from baseball for life for their involvement with the New York gambler Arnold Rothstein, maintaining the ruling even after they were acquitted in a Chicago trial. Regardless of the verdict of juries, no player that throws a ball game, no player that entertains proposals or promises to throw a game, no player that sits in a conference with a bunch of crooked players and gamblers uh, where the ways and means of throwing games are discussed and does not promptly tell his club about it will ever again play professional baseball Landis decreed. So remember, this was the very first baseball commissioner that put that stipulation in there that gambling is not acceptable in any type, means, or manner. So for those that do have questions in regards to a particular player that they feel should be in the the Hall of Fame because of his playing performance that's why those stipulations were put in there early in the 1900s so not that I'm pointing names to anybody Robert Hone Loco Senor (laughs) you got to know when to hold them know when to fold them the gambler's last deal exactly and that's why he Certain players have not made it into the Hall of Fame from some of their actions and reactions to things they've done throughout their career or things like that. Are you hinting this at me, Donald? No, not you, John. A certain player that everybody says should be in the Hall of Fame, but that's why he's not in the Hall of Fame, and I don't think there should ever be an exception for that. He did something wrong. I'm not going to mention his name. Everybody out there knows who it is. But even though, yes, I do agree he was a good player, but the first commissioner of baseball set down these rules. So over the next several years, Landis made it his foremost task to rid baseball of the crooks and gamblers who had crept into the game. He banned a total of 18 players along with Philly's president, William D. Cox, indefinitely for varying levels of involvement with gambling. Before 1920, if one player approached another player to throw a contest, there was a very good chance he would not be informed upon, wrote Landis biography David Petrusa. Now, there was an excellent chance he would be turned in. (laughs) While Landis finished sweeping the bad seeds from the game, he turned his attention to opening up opportunities for up co- up and coming players up until the 1920s baseball's minor leagues operated separately from major leagues and minor league players were not allowed always allowed to move up landis demanded that all minor league leagues become associated with the major league draft and thus subsequently demanded that major league clubs disclose all transactions with their farm systems. The new rule prevented the team from concealing prospects and ultimately denying them a path to the majors. Um, Pop in the chat. The gamblers left. Are you hinting this at Nona? So Barry Bonds will never make it or an A-Rod. Uh, Schilling, Clemens, all cheated, and we'll make it in. <laughs> uh, know when to walk away and when to run. If I am running, you should 
to because something is wrong. Well, there's always something wrong there, John. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, Though critics called him ruthless, there is no question that Landis restored dignity and respect to baseball during his 24 years as the sport's first baseball commissioner. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in a special vote soon after his death on November 25, 1944. Landis may have been arbitrary, self-willed, and even unfair, but he called him as he saw him. And he turned over to his successor and the future a game cleansed of the nasty spots which followed World War I, uh, wrote J.G. Taylor Spink, publisher of the Sporting News. Kinshaw Mountain Landis put the fear of God into weak characters who might otherwise have been inclined to violate their trust. And for that, I, as a lifelong baseball lover, am eternally grateful. Baseball is something more than a game to an American boy. It is his training field for life work. Destroy his faith in its squareness and honesty, and you have destroyed something more. You have planted suspicion of all things in his heart. Keenshaw Mountain Landis's quote. All right. Naturally, of course... He doesn't have anything as far as career stats throughout his career other than the time he spent as the first commissioner of baseball. Again, for 24 years. There you have it, our only inductee for 1944, Kinshaw Landis. So let me uh, go ahead and end this part here. And then we will get ready and prepared to open up our, uh, oops, sorry about that. Let me move here. Um, so next week for next Friday, there was no, because of the war effort in 1943, there were in, no inductees for 1943, but then we got to jump back in time to 1942. 1942, which will be next week. And we'll have to figure out what to add in with next week's. But I'll probably do a little bit longer special for the inductee that went in in 1942. And for 1942, it is Rogers Hornsby. Inducted in 1942, his primary team, the St. Louis Cardinals, and his primary position, he was a second baseman. So we will be doing uh, Robert Hornsby's... uh, Hall of Fame induction next Friday in our series. So we only have a few weeks. I think, I believe it's the first part of November where where I think it's the first Friday in November we're going to end this series going back to 1936. So uh, don't ever look back. Something might be gaining on you. <laughs> I go out big footing and have heard some whoops. That would make Rosie O'Donnell run. (laughs) All right, so there you go. There you have it. That is our content for the Hall of Fame Friday. I am wearing a little bit different gear today, trying to be on the patriotic side. One side note I would like to put out there, and this is because I am a true American, red, white, and blue, And I do appreciate my commander-in-chief being retired military. So please keep uh, Donald and Melania Trump in your purse. Um, It was reported last night that they did test positive uh, for COVID, but that they are asymptomatic. They're not showing many signs for it yet, but at least they will be monitoring and keeping an eye out for them. So please keep Donald and Melania Trump in your prayers, please. I would appreciate that. As most of the country, except for some of the Democrats, I mean Democrats, that uh, wish he would die. That's terrible when I heard some, some responses like that from the media, that that's what some of the Democrat Party people have said. That to me is uh, so unpatriotic, it's not believable. But... 
that's what happens sometimes. So let me uh, let me put this aside for now. I'll put that back in my Hall of Fame box. I will um, do a couple things real quick. Move things around, get things adjusted here. To get ready to go into our content at hand here. Get my stands up for how I disperse these cards. Gotta get things lined up here. We can see my bell in case we get some good hits out of the box. There we go. All right. Put my my knife here when we get ready to open it. Um, this is the box we are going to be opening. We put this here, but I just wanted to highlight really quick since I do have a couple people in here, John and uh, Robert. This is uh, a preview on what my new silver mystery packs look like. Um, you kind of know the size of a blaster box. I'll put this up here for, for kind of like size comparison. But there's two packs of cards in here, 20 cards in each pack. Perfect fit for the bags I bought for the product for my silver packs. You can kind of see my reflection in there in, in the bubbles. But um, so this is, uh, let me see if that'll fit right there. There we go. Put that just there for the moment until we get ready here. But those are my silver packs. Let me go over. So just so you do know, in the description of this video, I have the information. But let me read it to you real quick. So tomorrow, 10 3 2020 at 6 a.m. my ebay listing will post up uh, for my new silver mystery pack product and will be selling for $34.95 the price is reduced if more than one pack is purchased in a single transaction so these here i'm not going to open them up and do them on my live streams and stuff like that like i did before i just decided to put them up on ebay but for those that do want, if you do purchase one on eBay from me um, and tell me in the live stream, um, I will hold on to it. Uh, Democrats today would hate JFK. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, because the Democrats have really changed. Um, but yeah, so the 2020 Series 1 50 Years of Baseball Silver Mystery Packs will include 40 cards of the following. I'll give you the breakdown real quick here. Um, there will be 35 different year random cards, including star player cards, rookies, draft picks, and prospects from 1971 through 2020. That covers 50 years of baseball right there. And there will be possible extra hits in there, and I'll explain that in, a little, in just a minute here. All right. Then you will also get, along with your 35 cards, you'll get three random Hall of Fame player cards, uh, possible Hall of Fame rookie cards, and or second year cards for Hall of Famers. Okay. And then you will get included in your mystery pack a random SP or insert or serialized card. And you will, every mystery pack will get an autograph card. So you're guaranteed an autograph card card in every mystery pack in this run okay so um other than that the reason i said possible extra hits in the 35 different year random cards including star players rookies draft picks and prospects there may be some short prints or inserts or serialized cards contained within those 35 years of baseball also just to add in some extra hits that are possible within the packs. Um, so far, I'm going to try and make some more up tonight, but I do have my listing going up tomorrow for 25 mystery packs. But as I get more mystery packs made up, I will be adding more into the mix. So that's what we will do there. So I just wanted to just briefly highlight that and mention that to you about the mystery packs. Okay set that off to the side here so I do have 25 of those available already and other than that we're going to go ahead and get ready to open up this blaster box 
and get into the remaining content for our stream today. I do apologize for not doing one yesterday, and I was didn't end up getting home till um, I think it was about 6:30 um, last yesterday. So it was a little too late, so I opted not. And then when I looked on my schedule, I was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to do the next, next lesson in my uh, video series for Thursdays till next week anyway. Because I think I remember I probably scheduled it that way because of my wife's two doctor's appointments yesterday. So let's go ahead and open this up real quick here and see what we get in my final blaster box here for... 2020 Tops Archives. Okay, so we will put this in the background just like always. I will get our, oops, oh my word, the pack went flying. Get our archives. I'm going to keep an eye on that. I'll be right behind the archives pack here. Um, and had a pack go flying. Okay, I might have. Don't know for sure. We will get these all out here. We'll close the box up. When we are opening the box, I like to put it. Oh, there we go. I can kind of set this. Kevin can keep an eye on the whole situation. He's hiding out over here. Oh, you, there you go. You can see my eyes. Keeping an eye on the pack here. And let's get these all laid out here so we can go through these saving, uh, save, saving seven baseball packs here. And our quest to try to see how many cards we can get out of the 12. I almost should have bought a case of this stuff. I didn't realize I'd have to go with what I did. But, um... Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I just had to check something real quick here on my phone. Okay. Good to go there. All right. So, we will get into now. Let me do a refresh on the chat here. That one's good. What's this? Uh, don't ever look back. Something might be gaining on you. Is that people are sick? Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm an ex- Democrat. I am 33 now and have been becoming more distant from the pop party. I would be embarrassed to say I'm a Democrat nowadays. Democrats today would hate JFK. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And I will be perfectly honest with you. There have I've, I've been pretty much a Republican most of the time. Um, but I have voted for Democrats in the past, but I don't think I will be anymore. All right. You don't necessarily vote on the party, but you vote on the people and what they stand for within the parties. And the Democrat Party is just going way, way too far left. And that is my personal opinion. So, without further ado, we are going to start going into and rip, gripping and ripping these packs here. Alright, so any questions before I do get started? As far as uh, what's taking place in the channel tomorrow with my sale, um, it won't be much new, new stuff. I might bring out some other stuff if people request or have anything they are looking for. I can see if I can locate it in my massive, massive... It seems like the more I organize and get everything set up and stuff, it, the harder it is to find things sometimes. But we will get ready to go to town here. Boom. All right. So other than that, I'm going to get ready to start gripping and ripping. We've got three people watching. That's fine. Five thumbs up, thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. And let's get into these baseball packs here. See if I can find another uh, Kyle Lewis or Lewis Robert. But there we go, a Hall of Famer right off the top. And I got to fix something here real quick with my phone. You'll see the. You'll see everything jumping around here a little bit. Hold on. 
Uh, I got to know when to hold them. No, not that one. I got to get another piece of tape here. Real quick. There we go. I have a problem with the, my, my phone's umbilical cord here. In case you're wondering what that is, that's the, the charging cable. That's the charging cable. <laughs> You'll learn when you do a lot of long streams and stuff, you have to leave your phone plugged in so the battery don't run down. <laughs> Let me just check real quick. I'm doing good on the heat factor. So first off, right off the bat, is a Ty Cobb. Like these Hall of Famer carts, that's for sure. So there's a Ty Cobb. Hall of Famer, and let's see, which one are these again? These are the 1955 uh, style. No, not 1955. These are the 1974s. The 1974s. Willie McCovey, there we go, Willie McCovey with the Giants. Then we've got uh, Hin Jin Ru with the Blue Jays. Hin Jin Ru with the Blue Jays. Then we've got our 2002 tops. I like how it's a 2002 type throwback, but they bought got on here 2020. I always noticed that on those. I was like, that makes it easy. Just reverse the 2-0 to make it an 2 and that's the set it's from. But Chris Sale with the Red Sox. Um, there we go. Robel Garcia, rookie card for the Chicago Cubs. And there we go. We got a, a selected by the Youth of America, Shohei Otani with the California Angels Gold Cup card. It is our insert card. This is an insert card. All right. And then we've got uh, Matt Carpenter with the St. Louis Cardinals and J.D. Martinez with the Boston Red Sox for our 55 throwbacks. So these are the 55s, the 74s, and the 2002s that we can find in this set. All right. All right. All right. First up to bat here, we've got the Texas Rangers pitcher, Corey Kluber. Then we've got uh, Gliber Torres for the New York Yankees shortstop. Then up to bat next, we've got Tony Gonsolin, Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher. Rookie card. And then uh, Anthony Santander, Baltimore Orioles. 2002 tops. Oh, no Hall of Famers yet. Boom, there we go. As soon as I speak of it, it shows up. Raleigh Fingers with the Oakland Athletics Hall of Famer. Boom, we got the conductor, Chris Sale. The condu I don't know if I've got this one in my short prints. Um, card number 307. Although he's a maestro on the mound, Chris's nickname, the conductor, has nothing to do with music. It's actually a reference to train conductors. The man who gave him his nickname, Red Sox teammate Dustin Pedroia, points out that the Southpaw punches tickets. The day Sale recorded his 300th punch out of 2017. He also punched his team's ticket to the postseason. So there we go. Chris Sale, the conductor. <laughs> I like this uh, high number set subset they got here. Uh, two different. There's two different high number sets that they got. I think this one's 10 or 15. I think it's 15 or 20. Somewhere around there. And then uh, the other ones. So Jake Fraley, outfielder for the Seattle Mariners. Where's left behind? He's probably working. All right. Rookie card for Jake Fraley. And then Dylan Cease, rookie card for the Chicago White Sox. Oh, no, I'm putting them in the back. Didn't get no Hall of Famers yet. Let me put that Seattle Mariner up in front there. Because there's no... Hall of Famers in that set yet. 
So far we got two out of the uh, 74s. And uh, Raleigh Fingers out of the 2002. Moving on to pack number three. Is Clayton Kershaw with the Los Angeles Dodgers. They just played in a wild card game and they progressed to the next level. Uh, three games to nothing. I'm trying to remember who they played for sure. But um, I saw the I get my little MLB updates and tell me this tells tells me the status on everything that's gone on in baseball. So Los Angeles pitcher, Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher Clay and Kershaw. All right, and then next we have here New York Mets catcher Mike Piazza, Hall of Famer. And there we go. Baltimore Orioles outfielder Frank Robinson. Boom. There we go. 2002 Tops archive set. Lou Gehrig with the New York. Is he New York Mets or Yankees? Yankees, right? Yep. That's what I was thinking. Back in the older days, you couldn't really tell for sure sometimes. I think the colors are off the 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 Mets blue is lighter than the Yankees dark blue. Um but New York Mets David Wright. David Wright. Boom. Where is Kevin? We got a Zach Gallon. Zach Gallon with the Arizona Diamondbacks rookie card short print. 49 out of 99. That is an awesome number on that one, that's for sure. 49 of 99. I gotta get me a... Penny sleeve on this one. And get this in a top loader here for the short print. Hmm. Might be able to find a home for this guy. I think I might be able to find a home for this guy. Well, that's our hit. And probably in the box then. Is getting this short print. Zach Gallant. Pitcher. Rookie card. For the Arizona Diamondbacks. 49 out of 99. That is cool. All right. this real quick okay so let me just kind of set this off to the side here for now in case kevin pops in let me know if kevin shows up he'll probably see that though if he takes a peek uh san francisco giants pitcher tin Lin lincecum with the uh rookie card and then al kaline hall of famer there's our first hall of famer for the 1955 Design for the archives cards, Al Kaline, Detroit Tigers, outfielder. All right, moving on to pack number four. Cool as the other side of the pillow. <laughs> you cease to amaze me. You're only 33 there, John. You, you, my friend, are an oddity for your age group. Knowing the history of our country and things like that. But I do admire that. Trust me. I was talking to somebody the other day and they said they didn't realize some simple historical fact. And I'm like, really? They don't teach you that in school anymore? No. Oh. I was like, oh my word. Randy Johnson with the Arizona Diamondbacks Hall of Famer. And Randy Johnson. There we go. There's the same, there's the same uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, Zach Gallen. I'm pretty sure I've got this one. And if I do, I think I'll match these two up. Put this one on the back when I give it to a certain individual in the not-so-distant future. Don't say anything, but it'll probably be for Kevin. <laughs> that is cool. So Zach Gallon, there. Matter of fact, I'm going to just set this here so I double-check that one. I saw two of three, two of three of young kids, don't 
Oh, two out of three young kids don't know that millions of people died in the Holocaust. Oh, yeah. They're oblivious. You know why? Because they don't teach them that in school anymore. Unfortunately, they do not teach that to them in school anymore. So, that's looking strange there, but I'm doing that for a reason. Actually, it's too tight in that one. Oh, where did I put that other? Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I'm looking for... Oh, there we go. I'm going to put this just training time out here. I'm going to get a little bit thicker one here. I'm going to put this... Actually, I'm going to check real quick just to make sure. If we are good to go there, I'm going to send those to Kevin. Or get those to Kevin. Uh, what was the base card number again? 172. Let me just double check my checklist here. While we're on the subject, yes, I already have Zach Gallant, so that one will go together as a pair. I like doing that. Because to me, that kind of makes more sense to leave these two together. Because I know I don't think Kevin is doing much of uh, the archives. So I'm going to leave this together here with the uh, short print and the base on the other side. Don't say anything to Kevin. <clears throat> but there we go. Put this one away for now. We'll keep it in reserve in case we need another one. Adrian Morejon with the San Diego Padres rookie card. All right. And then next we've got Christian Yelich with the Milwaukee Brewers. And Jose Ramirez with the Cleveland Indians. Ooh, I don't think I've... Oh, me, I don't know. I might have this one. Miguel Cabrera. Miggy moves to Motown. Miggy moves to Motown. For our, for that subset. This is, a, uh, this is a short print card also. So I think it goes to 315, 301 to 315 for the uh, these types. And then the neck, the last 10 in the, in the short print run is the sports extra cards. I'm going to just put him in front for now. And then George Kell with the Detroit Tigers. Pretty sure George Kell is a Hall of Famer. And, of course, everybody knows the New York Mets catcher, Gary Carter, is a Hall of Famer. Uh, Chuck Dupree, hey doll, can't stay long, just saying hi, and I'll watch the replay after work. No problem, Chuck. No problem whatsoever. Just real quick, we did find a, the, a short print in this blaster box, 49 out of 99. Zach Gallon, Arizona Diamondbacks rookie card but don't say anything to Kevin if you talk to him in the chat rooms and there's the base card for that one but it'll be going to somebody in the not so dear distant future <laughs> all right moving on to pack number five out of this seven pack blaster box thanks for stopping in Chuck appreciate you being here and just give you an update real quick I do have 25 of my mystery bags completed so far just um, I'm gonna try and get some more ready tonight I've got I want to try and get at least another 10 so that way I can edit my uh, posting for YouTube um, with an updated quantity right now I just have it listed with 25 mystery packs I'm hoping I can increase that to at least 35 before it goes live at 6 a.m. in the morning uh, the, the posting on my eBay. Um, but New York Yankees outfielder, Guy Giancarlo Stanton. And then we've got uh, Baltimore Orioles third baseman, Brooks Robinson, Hall of Famer. All right. Uh, Ryan McMahon with Colorado Rockies. Jose Abreu with the Chicago White Sox. Will Myers with the San Diego Padres. And we got a Boba Shet. I think I got one of these already. 
we got a Bobisha. Bobisha. For the uh, number nine in a set of 30 full color pitcher cards from the 55 throwback cards series. Um, yeah, let me put the Boba Shet right there for now. Michael Brantley with the Houston Astros. And Lucas Giolito with the Chicago White Sox. Right, moving on to pack number six. Pack number six out of seven packs in the box. Christian Walker, Arizona Diamondbacks, first baseman. And we've got uh, Toronto Blue Jays catcher, Danny Jansen. All right, next up to bat, we've got Yu Chang, rookie card for the Cleveland Indians. Craig Biggio with the Houston Astros, Hall of Famer. Boom! <laughs> Seattle Mariners, Edgar Martinez, Hall of Famer. <laughs> now we've got a Angels Elite Trout and Otani card from that 1960 throwback year. Okay. And then we've got the Gary Sanchez with the New York Yankees. And the Kent Maeda with the Minnesota Twins. All right. Let's see if we can get another hit out of this box. That was probably our hit, though, the short print for Zach Gallon. Most likely. And then our Tops Archives. Last pack, Magic. Let's see if we can pull something nice here. Bay Family and Sports. Hello, Mr. Donald. Nice to have you in with us today, Aaron. Yeah, I was. I got the notification because I asked to be notified on the status of those packages, yours and Ethan's. And Ethan texted me last night, and I think you texted me too. So at least we know your package should be there. If it's not there, I don't think you'll get it today from the location, but maybe you know about your location more than I do. But most likely, you should get your package. I would gather, gather probably tomorrow or Monday at the latest. But I think you should. That's the longest I've ever had somebody have to wait to get a package in the mail from me, though. That was interesting how you both kind of contacted me and let me know. I really appreciate that. So Boston Red Sox outfielder Ted Williams, Hall of Famer. Boom! Baltimore Orioles shortstop Cal Ripken Jr. All right, and then we've got uh, Kevin Newman with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, it showed being Lexington this morning, so I'd say, well, we'll get it in a day or two. Yes. I would think you should get it either tomorrow or Monday for sure. So at least we know it's in your in, in your state for sure now. <laughs> Eddie Rosario with uh, the Minnesota Twins. Uh, Carlos Santana with the Cleveland Indians. Then we've got a uh, Master and Apprentice, Yelich and Hero. With our 60s throwback. Malik Smith with the Seattle Mariners. And last card in the box is Nick Senzel with the Cincinnati Reds. Boom, boom, boom. So, there we have it. All right. There we have it. So that's the whole oh mystery pack. It's our mystery pack archives, except for the top loader. I forgot, almost forgot about the top loader. I wonder if we can get maybe uh, Ken Griffey Jr. out of the top loaders here. I got my Cal Ripken Jr. I just need to find me a Ken Griffey Jr. But it does not matter if I do or not. It'll be nice to see who we got for the top loader card. So let's go ahead and get ready to open this here. 
Get Discord, turn it around, do a reveal. Then we'll get ready to wrap things up here after a little bit. So let me take a peek here real quick. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, I got a peek at that one. But let's see if you guys can figure it out. see the ball cap you can see the ball cap looks like it might be an Atlanta an Atlanta Brave an Atlanta Brave any guesses out there in the channel looks like an Atlanta Brave an Atlanta Brave any guesses out there in YouTube land <laughs> Dude, I know we only got a few people watching, so I'm not going to hold to the suspense too long here. Recognize those peering eyes there. Oh my word, no guesses? No guesses. Chipper Jones with the Atlanta Braves is our top loader. So there we have it. There we have it. Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones. Put him right in front of the Robin Yount. Chipper Jones. Hall of Famer for the Atlanta Braves. Chipper. Chipper. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in today. Um, again, we will be here tomorrow for those that can make it. If not, um, that is fine with me also. Marlins Cubs game two on ABC. Okay. So other than that, I can't think of anything else to really talk about for today. I'm glad that uh, Faith, Family, and Sports, Aaron, and uh, Ethan's Elvis Covers and More are going to get their package from uh, my last sale. And uh, Aaron's uh, Patreon package from last month. Here, I'm getting ready to get, get this month's package together for you and get ready to send it out. Um, but other than that, and I'll probably wait until after the sale... Uh, well, and then, plus, I'll have to wait until, I think, Monday I should get my payment from pay Patreon showing up in my PayPal account. That way I'll have more more money to use for postage to send the packages out. <laughs> so, and my trade goodies. Yes, yes, your trade. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot about that. But, yeah, that's right. You have your trade goodies in there, the cards we traded. Um so yeah, so I'll be updating my list after I go through these cards here to see what I need for my archives baseball. And I will post up a listing of the base cards that I need for the for the uh, Topps archives and then the just the short print cards, not all the subsets because I'm not even trying to collect all those. Those might come to a sale uh, tomorrow for different people in the channel if anyone is interested. So... Other than that, um, I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to do for today. So today I do have a busy schedule. I'll be working on my mystery bags to try and get more of those together. I want to do at least another 10, so I have 35. I don't know if I get uh, 25 more finished or not, but we'll see how things go today with my uh, sorting and working I know my wife's working on just cleaning some stuff up. She's got an extra day off today from work. So I will just be uh, busy doing that and sorting cards and preparing for tomorrow's sale. I got to check with uh, Kevin to see if he's available. And if he watches this, maybe he'll know for sure if 
I'll, I'll probably just text him. I'll send him a text message. Um, see if he can help me out like he does once a month in my sale. But other than that, does anyone have any other questions for me before I get ready to sign off? Because I'm just barely over the hour mark, which is fine. Don't get me wrong there. Um, but yes, other than that, I'm going to get ready to uh, wrap things up for today. And um, we will go to town. Get some of my uh, chores done. Work on some more products. Get ready for the sale tomorrow. And uh, I think that's it. All right. So let me uh, back my gear up here. So when I turn the camera around, I can get in the in the shot here. Show you what I'm wearing for today. Just a little bit different day. Um, have a good day, everyone. No problem. Yep, thank you there, Aaron. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Chuck Dupree popped in for a minute here. Um, John Fishman was here. Robert Hone was here. And I believe that's everybody for today. I think that's the only people that interacted with me in the chat today, which is fine. So I'm wearing my red, white, and blue Hall of Fame hat today. But I'm not wearing my Hall of Fame t-shirt. I'm wearing my red, white, and blue t-shirt with the American flag and the bald eagle. The bald eagle, our favorite bird in our country. All right, so that is my stream for today. Again, I apologize for not doing a live stream yesterday with my wife's uh, doctor's appointment. Two doctor appointments, actually. One late morning and one early afternoon. So we kind of stayed in Everett, and then she wanted to go shopping, so I obliged her and went to the mall. So, uh, but it was fun. Uh, we did have a good day yesterday, a relaxing day for the most part, but it's never fun going to a doctor's office, especially sitting in a doctor's office the whole time with a mask on. But that's the new norm. So other than that, you all have a great and wonderful day. We'll see you guys around the channels, I believe. Uh... Kevin's probably doing his live stream this afternoon. I don't know for sure, but he usually does it 3 o'clock. I know he won't be in a super hurry, maybe, because um, he uh, Ethan's Elvis covers and more. He did his sale last night. So um, don't have to worry about that pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to sign off. You all take care. Lord bless your day. Oh, and on a side note, please pray for Donald and Melania Trump as they've uh, tested positive for COVID and that everything will be well with them. Uh, we should always keep our commander in chief and his wife and family in our prayers, no matter what the left might say. Um, so please do keep them in your prayers if you do can remember to do that. Um, me and my wife uh, said a prayer for them and our country as a whole with this upcoming election cycle. And pray for the people in the post office too because it will be a busy month for them leading up to the election with all the political ads and the ballots and everything that's in the news. But uh, just uh, take care. Have a great and wonderful day. And we will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for my once monthly sale. All right. Take care, Lord bless you, and have a wonderful day. All right, bye now.